Anybody who says that they understand quantum physics is absolutely a liar because it's this invisible field of energy. I actually looked up the book I want to get is Quantum Physics for Dummies. Yeah. Because <laughs> I want to understand it better. Yeah. So basically, quantum mechanics says this, that your subjective mind has an effect on the objective world at the very, very tiny, tiny level of subatomic particles. So, you know, Einstein and Planck were fooling around with subatomic particles. They were uh, putting energy into electrons, disturbing electrons, and they were expecting those electrons to fall like an apple falling from the tree, just like the Newtonian predictable world, you know, in a very smooth and consistent way. And, and when they did that, it didn't happen. The electrons were disappearing and reappearing, and like it was more like a ball rolling down steps. And they all of a sudden realized that the tiny world of subatomic particles, atoms, don't behave like the very large world, like planets and suns and everything else, and apples falling from trees. So they started looking for the electrons, and as they start to look for them and measure them, they would appear. And so they realized that the observer, that the mind was so commingled at that, at that level of subatomic particles that it was impossible to separate the two. And in fact, every quantum physics experiment, you have to have an observer present, because without the observer being present, it changes the outcome. So, you know, I've drank martinis with quantum physicists till sunrise talking about this, and they always say, yeah, you know, the observer effect, you know, Joe, the subatomic world uh, is the only thing that it affects. It doesn't happen for very large things, and I always say the same thing. Maybe we're just poor observers. Maybe Ooh. we can get better at observation and focus. So, so the quantum field is an invisible field of energy or frequency, and all frequency carries information that's beyond this space and time. There's no bodies there, there's no people, there's no things, there's no places, there isn't even time. It's one infinite field. They, they call it the fertile void, the zero point, where there's nothing physical. But that's where all possibilities exist. And you can't enter it as an identity. You can't enter it as your body. In fact, when we teach people how to connect to that field, we say to them, now it's time to become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere in no time and that means if you're not your body but you're you have no attention on your body no attention on your identity or the people in your life that you identify with no attention on the things you own the objects that you that you're aware of no no attention on the place you're sitting the place you work the place you sleep the your home and no attention on the familiar past or the predictable future there's only one thing that you're at you you are in that moment that is awareness consciousness and that's the eye of the needle that is, that is the door to the quantum field, and you can't enter as a somebody. You've got to enter as a nobody. So teaching people how to get to this point, that's part of the formula. And that means they have to be able to be there without a face, without a name, without a diet, without their problems, without their disease. They have to be able to dissociate from everything known in their life. How? And then, well... Meditation? Yeah, that's what we, that's one of the formulas. We, we teach people how to do that. So, so it's actually very simple. Um, most people narrow their focus on material things like our, our eyes naturally do it like we we narrow our focus on objects on it's called a narrow focus or an object focus it turns out when you're stressed or you're the, the fight or flight nervous system switch on now you really narrow your focus because you're looking for the danger you're anticipating the danger so people get really stuck in a very narrow focus in fact when they're under stress they obsess they, they obsess about one thing. They're narrowing their focus, and they can't get beyond that one thought. Well, that's that's really adaptive. If T Rex is outside the cave, right, and you're and you're you got you got to keep your attention uh, and you got to stay aroused in order so you don't get eaten. Well, that that becomes a habit. So that kind of what's called conjure, convergent focus is very unhealthy for the brain. The, as you're aroused by those chemicals, and you're shifting your attention when you're in that state from one person to one appointment to another problem to another person to another place every person everything every object every place has a neurological network in your brain so as you begin to shift your attention from all these things and the brain is aroused it's like a lightning storm in the clouds your brain is firing those networks very incoherently and when the brain's incoherent you're incoherent so then do the exact opposite go from a narrow focus a convergent focus to a divergent focus. Open your awareness. Focus on nothing but space. And as you close your eyes and you sense space, you stop analyzing and you stop thinking. So as you're sensing space, you begin to slow your brain waves down. And as they slow down, 
all of a sudden the autonomic nervous system begins to merge and it comes forward and it starts to synchronize those circuits that were out of balance and what sinks in the brain links in the brain so all of a sudden the brain starts firing in a more coherent way and when that happens you're you, we call it getting beyond yourself you forget about yourself that is the moment you're entering that field and and you can't enter associated with anything known you got to enter uh, as an unknown you have to put more of your attention on it and less of your attention on you the higher the vibration the higher the frequency i mean the higher the level of awareness or consciousness and so so what we see in our events is we see or the first day the first two days is about getting beyond you mm -hmm. and uh, and what I do is I set up the conditions where I, I go further than where people normally go. You know, they go to a certain point and then they finish and I say, nah, we're gonna go further. So we take them past that point and sooner or later they start letting go. So, so when they start breaking through, they're contributing to the field. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we've measured the energy in the room after the first day of most of our events, in, in fact, the first day of many events, the energy goes up, and then the next day it goes up more. The next day it goes up, and that's available energy for people to heal. That's available energy for people to have a mystical experience. That's a available energy for them to create with. So, so then it becomes an entraining process. And what we do really well, and our research shows this, is we teach people how to suppress their neocortex, shut the lights out in this mechanism here that's your memory bank of your known identity self turn that down dial that down and our research shows that our students can do it very well now once you suppress this melon here the conscious mind what do you got left you got the subconscious mind you got the autonomic nervous system and that's the antenna so when we see people doing this and they start in training wow they they start having profound mystical experiences they start uh, people start having very profound energetic moments and and they're influencing one another <laughs> and of course now you're moving a community of people uh, across and once you get to that certain state then it just becomes magic everybody just it's everybody just goes it, it happens we just saw we were just doing an event in, in Mallorca uh, last week I got back on Sunday night uh, well actually Monday morning and we had 1300 people there and uh we solicited 1,300 people, and 1,300 people said, "We I had the most amazing week of my life." That they, everybody, the entire audience, had some type of personal transformation, personal breakthrough, amazing healing, or mystical moment that changed them for the rest of their lives. And and it it becomes a uh, becomes becomes a frequency that everybody becomes entrained to. Mm -hmm. And so then, by the same means, as people are starting to overcome all their old programs. Nobody's complaining, mm -hmm. and if nobody's complaining, and you're the only one complaining at the at the at the lunch table, all of a sudden you become aware. Everybody kind of looks at you, and you're yeah, like, "Yeah, you stick out." Oh, well, now I'm now I'm, I'm no one else is doing it. That's I, I don't have any agreement here, so they just finally just they stop. Here's the beauty behind it all: when when the field starts responding, the universe starts giving you feedback. I swear, I swear, I've seen this so many times. When the magic starts happening and things start falling out of nowhere, mm -hmm. you will look back at your entire past in that moment, and you're not going to want to change one single thing in your past because it brought you to the present moment. Yes. That's the moment the past no longer exists. That's the moment you're free. Yeah. That's when you say, it all makes sense. And so many people now in this work, when the they chills. start raising their awareness, uh, we just had a guy send a video in from Spain. I was laughing so hard at him because he had a really difficult life when he was young. And he just kept saying, in this beautiful way, I, I, it all makes sense now. I, mm -hmm. I understand. I understand everything. I've never felt this much love in my life. Of course, he's not viewing it from that same level of consciousness, that same level. He's viewing it from a, he's not in the labyrinth. He's looking at it from above and it yeah. all makes sense. And it's not discontinuous, it's unified because as you get closer and closer to connecting to that unified field, that invisible field of energy that connects everything material, as you get closer and closer to it, you experience greater levels of wholeness, greater levels of oneness. And as you do that, you feel less separation. So things all make sense, they all connect. Because you're at a greater level. Imagine where you can go with that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's the ultimate goal is where, you, where you, you need nothing because you're so whole, you're so connected. 
that that why would you, why would you need anything? You feel like you have it already. I think I think that's where that's the state in which the uncommon happens.